Oysters have a long history and much of it is really fraught with over harvest. Um, and it's funny, you gotta pull back and look at oysters themselves. They serve so many purposes in the ecosystem. They prevent erosion, they clean the water, they end up protecting seagrasses, marshes, um, they serve as critical habitat for forage fish to all the way to game fish. Um, and then obviously they feed people. Um, that's a lot of things to do. What's happened is that was a super desirable thing um, for some of the most really basic uses and then for consumption. And then what so often happens in natural resources is over harvest. And over harvest comes in many ways, but you end up getting commercial over harvest of any given creature, in this case oysters, and it can often become one of these really bad death spirals. As they continue to get over harvested and the giant ridges and mounds you used to see that would, that would make up a healthy reef get scattered and get ground down or removed entirely. And then not only have you lost the oyster, but you lost all of those benefits I talked about. 30 years ago when I first was here, oyster steering was already happening. And over the years, there has been a decline of the amount of oyster reefs and the size of the oyster reefs throughout our bay system, which comprises everything from uh, the starting of San Antonio Bay all the way to Port Aransas and back in Copano Bay. So uh, it's a very, very large area, but it is basically a decline in the resource of oysters. The oysters, they face a lot of threats. In our area, some of the biggest uh, things that have affected our reefs have been big storm threats that come through, but then we just also have harvest pressure. If areas of the bay are closed to harvest, then the harvesters have to harvest in smaller and smaller areas, which can be you know, higher pressure that has normally been able to be sustained by a reef. So you sort of have, it's almost like you have these natural phenomena happening, but then you have harvesting happening at the same time. The reefs just aren't ever to able to recover up to where they were before something else happens. A lot of people don't really know how important the sensitivity of you know, maintaining the, the ecosystem along the, the Texas Gulf Coast and really the, the, all the Gulf Coastal shorelines are and how important that is to uh, make it sustainable, managing, uh, you know, what's taken from the waters and, uh, and then we have some sustainable methods to uh, ensure that that goes on for many generations to come and you know, conservation is a huge part of that and uh, just all the uh, different tactics that uh, you know, can be deployed to, to make sure that we stay sustainable in the future and that people can enjoy uh, the great bounties of the Gulf Coast. Well, we got hooked up with the Galveston Bay Foundation several years back uh, with their oyster recycling program. Um, they're about 45 miles from where we're located, so they've kind of inched their way to the, uh, to the Houston uh, market. And uh, so we've been involved. It's just such a pure, um, this uh, sustainable um, thing they've got going on. So just the idea of you know, taking the, uh, the oyster shells that uh, we generate from people eating oysters on the half shell and uh, curing those and, and recycling those back into the base systems uh, to really manage erosion and just, uh, you know, more oysters coming on the scene is, uh, is, is very important. It's uh, late May and we're, we're planting this reef today. There is still natural spawning going on in the bay system right now. So the shells that we put out today could recruit oyster larvae um, as you know, almost immediately after they go in. We'll come back out here this time next year and we should see, be able to see about one and a half to two inch oysters growing on the shell we're about to put out. Well, oysters, oysters are a critical component of the natural lake landscape on our, t on our coastlines. They provide shoreline stabilization, they filter the water, they provide habitat for fishes, crabs, and shrimp. I mean, they're a critical component of, of our bay system. So when we remove that to consume the oysters, uh, we're taking that habitat out 
And it's important that we return that back into the bay systems so that it can recruit the next generation of oyster reefs. To increase that surface area of reefs is very, very important. It would be great if we could get back to the size and the amount of oyster reefs which we had 30, 40, 50 years ago. So with projects such as this, which add to the amount of, of oyster reefs in our bay to clean the water, provide shoreline protection, it all is gonna make things better for the future generations. Yeah, you, you can conduct oyster reef restoration wherever oysters can grow. And so you see these sorts of activities all along the Gulf Coast. You see, see them quite extensively along the Atlantic seaboard as well. That's all the same oyster. Um, the eastern oyster, it's all the same species. And so, it's a, again, it's a really neat way to get the public involved, educate them on the value of oysters, and then give them the opportunity to, to go see the fruits of their labor. It's more than just putting the shells back in the bay though. We are constantly evaluating if we're building reefs the right way, at the right time, um, in the right places. We'll go back and we'll be taking samples on that reef. We'll be studying the development of that reef to make sure that what we're doing is creating a reef that provides all the benefits that are lost when natural reefs are destroyed. Looking at biodiversity of a reef sample. So if we restore a reef, we'll go out and take samples, um, to understand how the reef is developing because we care about the oysters on the reef, but we also want to know is it providing all those habitat benefits that we expect and that we know that natural reefs provide. For us, I think it's very important that the reef doesn't have to look exactly like a natural reef, which you saw today, but we want it to function as close as possible to a natural reef. So the future of oysters is probably as long and complicated as the past. A critical habitat like that doesn't just go away and at that same moment, you don't just suddenly bring it back. It's many, many things. It's people getting involved. That's where it always begins, is people getting involved and saying that this conservation matters, that this resource matters. And, and then it's gonna be many different pieces. It's gonna be oyster projects. It starts by moving, and it starts by getting a program, and it starts by getting people involved, and getting scientists involved, and then starting to execute a plan that you can execute broadly. The writer Jonathan Swift once said, it's a bold man that ate the first oyster. And he's right, when you think about an oyster. But there's a, a line we use, particularly around CCA, is that it's an even bolder man who tries to restore. And I think that's an important thing to take away, is that the most important thing we can do for oysters right now is restore. And ensure that they're not only there in the future, but that there's more of them and that they're stronger and better and healthier than they've ever been. That is the future.